so we are back and after creating a loop now we want to turn this loop into uh, an arrangement and if you're you know beginning this journey and you ask yourself uh, okay so how do i actually turn my loop into a full working song and you have no idea what elements should be in an arrangement and how you should arrange your track then the idea of a reference track can be super helpful and what a reference track is is a track that is already produced um, ideally in the genre or sounding similar to the sound that you would like to achieve and um, we are looking at the reference track in terms of um, many different things. You can look at the structure, you can look at and listen to what elements have been used. Um, in this case, we want to look at the structure, so we want to see if there's a pattern happening um, that we can use as a guideline for our arrangement. And as a reference track, I've choose, um, chosen my track Native, which is actually more like a down-tempo track, um, but the arrangement or like the structure is still the same also for organic shamanic house tracks because the down-tempo is basically just slowed down electronic music, but it's still structured the same way. So it works super well. And this track in particular is pretty similar um, to the vibe that we are going for. So first what you need to do is, you know, you create an audio channel with your reference track and then you put the reference track in. I lowered the gain a little bit. And I also warp the track, right? I have to warp it here because um, if you want to play it back, then it's good to know the original BPM and warp the track. And I know that I produced the track in 100 BPM. So I set the warping tempo here and then you can see everything is aligning with the grid pretty much. And um, because it is warped, now if we change, you know, the tempo, the position stays the same, but just the timeline changes and that's what we need. So that's why warping is important. So right now I'm going to leave the tempo at 108. So we're going to listen to the track at 108 BPM. So 8 BPM faster than intended. Um, and we're getting closer to 120. So what we're going to do is, um, first of all, you know, if you have a look at the track, like without listening already, you can see you now there's different densities of energy, I would say, right? So here it's pretty thin. And here it's pretty thin, and here you zoom in more. Here it's a bit thin. So you can see already it's kind of like like a wave, you know? And the idea for an arrangement is to make it sound interesting. We want to work with uh, a concept called tension and release. And in order to create tension, we can build up the track and, and put a lot of elements in or we can take away elements like you can see here right this is the part that we call the break down where you take out for instance the bass and the kick and other elements and you strip it really down and this drops the energy but this also increases the tension because we need the bass and the kick to come back so this will happen then the release will happen then in what we call the drop you see here the energy keeps going right so it's a play between tension and release and it's a play between increasing and decreasing energy and it's more like a wave you know so it's it's building then it's peaking then it's going down again and then it's building again it's peaking and it's going down again like a wave so let's actually have a listen to the track and the cool thing is in Ableton when we are uh, listening to a track we can right click and we need to make sure that we are above the clip and we see the loudspeaker symbol and we can right click and we can add locator. And then we can write something, for instance, intro. 
right? So I will put this at the beginning because this is the intro of the track. And then you could see like we have the drop here. So I can add another locator, drop one, right? And the drop is where you either the kick or the bass line is coming in. In this case, it's where the bass line is coming in. And then we have the build here. So now it's like really building up, build up. And then we go all the way to the break. And then after the break, we have a drop again, drop two. And then we have a build again. And sometimes, you know, we have a build up and sometimes we have a build down also, especially towards the end. So here you could say this is the outro. This is um, where we transition into another uh, track or something in a DJ mix or you just want to take the people safely <laughs> home. So this is the part with the least energy, mo mainly mostly atmospheric and maybe a little bit of percussions. And then you maybe have the build down also where you slowly decrease energy by taking elements out. So this is now just pure graphic information and the cool thing is you know like now we have those locators we could just deactivate the clip by pressing zero and the track is gone but the markers are still there and this is what we're going to use um, as a guide but let's more have a listen actually to how the track sounds and how those different sections work right so let's start from the beginning <laughs> Uh -oh. Of course, I have to solo the track. Right? So, listen what you can hear. There's a bass drum. There's a pad. And there's some nature sounds. And maybe some ambience, like field recordings. Right? And then here... We have the first percussions coming in. But no bass line yet, so it's slowly building. We're increasing, building tension. And elements are slightly added more and more. Here's new percussions coming in. And here's a little transition. And here we drop and the bass line is coming. New percussions. Little transition again. Building up. <laughs> so the synth is really opening up. There's a lot of percussions going on. And now you can already feel 
to build down a little bit. So the synth, the filter is closing. The intensity is slowly going down. Less elements, right? So you can feel a shift of energy is happening. We're going more into the break. And now we are full in the break. So now we just have the pads like really filtered low. Just some atmosphere sounds. And the bass line. And now a new element comes in. And I really like to play with that idea of a B section. So after the break, we continue the track in a new direction with a new element that is then carrying like those strings, for instance. Right, so now we're building the tension again. And then with the drop, we release. And then we start to build again, adding percussions. more percussions more percussions and the filter is opening up and melody is coming in so now we're getting towards the peak After we reach the peak, no, and you can achieve this increase of energy by working with octaves and f and filter like opening up the filter make it sound super bright and bright is more energy and then if you put the octave higher we also perceive it as more energy see and now we're building it down the filter is closing again the octaves are going down the notes are being played in a lower register everything is coming down again There's a transition and then we're going into the outro. Right, which is again just ambient sounds and it's pretty much where we started. It's just fading out.
Yeah, and this was my track Native, and um, now we can just deactivate the clip and go ahead back to 120 BPM and then we can start using this as a reference for our own arrangement and you might notice also that I'm working in measures of 8 right 8 bars now every 8 bars something is changing or multiples of 8 bars right so break for instance is like 3 times 8 bars and then two times eight bars so it's all happening in um, measures of eight bars and this is also how i approach my arrangement so i go step by step in eight bars and now with the elements that we have um, we now can start to create our arrangement and of course we need to move them around a little bit because right now if we start it's all there right so we need to start making some adjustments all right so let's see how we can turn the loop into an arrangement um we will start with the intro and uh, as we heard in the reference track in the intro there's not much going on there's basically just some ambience background ambience the pad in this case it was the kick already playing we can see if we want to bring in the kick or not um so what i'm doing now is i'm gonna collapse all of these here because for now i don't need to look at the waveform and then we're gonna move them around a little bit because we want to go step by step and not having everything happening at the beginning so the nature sounds they can stay that's the first step and the nature sounds we can drag out pretty much the whole song let's say we go for like six minutes more or less those are the nature sounds and then this is the harmony low and this is the pad right so this is also definitely what we want in the intro so we leave that and the hand pen and the kalimba. So what I remember from the reference track is that the melody came in something around after 48 bars. So I put the kalimba here for now. And the hand pen, I feel, can come in after 24 bars. We need to see, or maybe with the drop. Depends on how we build the arrangement. So then... The tribal shaker they are a little bit more energy so i would bring them in later maybe around here for now and let's see how that feels later and the claves can maybe come earlier they are not so intense the bass definitely comes here at the drop not earlier and the komako drum we need to see maybe after 16 bars or after 25 bars depending on how we feel the intro the bata drum, maybe after 16 bars. And the shamanic drum can come in after 8 bars. And yeah, let's have the kick already playing. Okay, so let's see how that sounds for an intro. And let's maybe go for 17 bars. Oh no, 16 bars. And let's see how that feels. And we loop the last eight bars so this is what i'm doing in order to see to stay connected with what wants to happen uh, next so we start from the beginning listening okay Alright, so I feel right now the clavis can come in later because with the shamanic drum that's totally fine. We want to give it space to be perceived. 
And now let's continue. All right, so far so good. Now, what you can do, because everything is set to loop, you can just extend it. That's really handy, right? If you check, it's set to loop. And when it's set to loop, you can just go to the very end of it, hold the mouse left, and then go left and right. So this is how we can just extend everything. And, you know, like if you have everything highlighted, you can even extend everything at the same time. So now you see we're moving everything at the same time. So put the kick until here, the butter drum. All right, let's listen. So now we transition. Here we have the Kumakus coming in. We notice that the pad is missing right so you need to make sure that the pad is coming with us sending that and my feeling is um we can already bring the pen the uh, hand pen in here let's see how that feels let's go from here Maybe that is a bit too early. Let's bring it with the drop. And let's just have the tribal shakers coming. See, now we're building the energy. And here we have this little transition coming, right? And this there's a little moment of tension because we're just going to take out the kick for two bars, right? So I just dial it back here. And now this creates this moment of a little bit of tension. And then we're going to drop and the kick is coming back. And then now we also bring in... We also bring in the, the bass line. So now we have all these going, keep them going. Now the bass is coming. And as well, the claves. And the hand pen is coming. Okay, so cool. Let's check that transition here. Again, the pad is missing. Okay, I make this 16 bars now. And what we can try um, the second time it repeats here, the hand pen, we can try to actually um, put it, play it an octave higher, see how that sounds. Sometimes it's working well. We need to see if, if we warp it and pitch it up, how that sounds. So what I can do is I can go in here, hold Command E to cut it. And... Is it working? Cutting it? No. So then I just make it shorter and then I duplicate it. And maybe I give it another color. 
so that I know the different one. And now I'm just going to go to the pitch here and going to increase it 12 semitones, which is an octave higher. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, that is a bit too intense. Um, let me just leave it like this. Yeah, sometimes it's working, sometimes not. It's already pretty high, and this is why it sounds a bit too shrill and harsh for me. Okay, so then we just keep going. Here's the build-up, the kalimba is coming in. We keep everything going. Nature, pet, and the claves and the shaker. Sub bass and the Kumaku drum and the Bata drum. And we might need to find um, an extra percussion also because here it says new perks, we didn't bring them in. Here's another transition. You can also just highlight this area here and then press zero to deactivate it. This will also just mute the kick there. Let's see what happens if we Pitch up the kalimba, maybe that sounds good. Interesting, but I feel it's not really working well with this anymore. It's kind of clashing because now it's played in a lower octave and this is played in a higher octave, but if this is playing in a higher octave, it's clashing with this one. So it's not really working so well. So maybe let's just find another percussion. See how we can increase the energy here. Maybe going to the organic perks. Yeah, this one is working pretty well, so I just copy this one and bring it in. Just always remember which channel you are, channel 23, so we have to find the 23 here, because they are identical, and then we bring it in here, just paste it. Okay, and now, you know, we are still just making a rough sketch. Of course, we're going to work out the details a little more, make the transitions a little more, make things a little bit more dynamic. This is, yeah, more like a rough sketch. And then the fine work comes later. So, okay, we're building up. Let's see what else. Okay, I think at this point it's good to just have a listen from the beginning and see how it feels. It's always good to be um, in context, right? Because if you only listen to eight bars, 
then it might work well, but it's actually good to reconnect with what is going on from the beginning. So let's just have a listen from the beginning. Maybe close your eyes and just listen how that feels. That's how I do it. I close my eyes and just listen. And I actually feel uh, that the kick is coming in too early. It's like already like hitting me right in the face. Maybe let's have a smooth introduction. Can't even fade the nature sounds in and the pad can fade in a little bit more. It's already fading in on its own, as you can see here. But let's really go into the fades and let's grab it and fade it in like a long time. Let's really have it a gradual build up. Even the nature sounds, they can fade in over four bars. So we have a smooth intro. Okay, I feel the nature sounds are coming in too quick. We could even try to have the kick coming in after 16 bars, which is like totally uh, typical in many tracks, you know, like there's an intro of 16 bars and then after 16 bars, the kick comes in. And because we have the shamanic drum here, let's see how that feels if we start with the shamanic drum and then bring in the kick. And now I actually feel the fade in for the pad is too much. It was, it was okay like that. Let's just bring it in like that. It's working well. Okay, so now I feel the butter drum is actually too early because we already have the kick and the clave. That's enough. So maybe let's feel the transition again. That's totally enough. Okay, and they're coming in both at the same time. We don't need that. Let's bring in the Kumakos here, maybe later.
Okay, so far so good. At this point, I notice a little bit the sound is a bit too repetitive and a bit starts to get a bit boring. So, very easy way to fix that is to apply an auto filter. So we go on this hand pan channel here and we go to audio effects, EQ and filters, and then we grab the auto filter just double clicking. And all we can do now um, is we can set the LFO to modulate the filter frequency. So basically, in, like we could move it like that ourselves, right? And we could. Open the filter and close it ourselves. But actually, we can have the LFO modulate um, this frequency and make it do the movement for us. So now, when I increase the amount here, that's the intensity, and here you see the rate, which is the speed. And we can think it to the beat if we wanted to. We could say, like, over the course of six bars or eight bars, modulate the sound this amount. Let's see how that sounds. Oh, that's a bit too intense, I feel, the amount already, because we're losing a lot of frequency. I also set the frequency pretty low, like 700 hertz. You almost hear much of the signal, uh, not much of the signal because there's not much going on in that area for the sound. If you look here, it has its resonant around 1000 hertz. So if we go below 1000, we start to lose a lot of the clarity of this. So let's bring down the amount. Yeah, that's already not so annoying and more interesting and we can even make it more interesting by using one of my favorite effects, which is the auto pan. So we go to pitch and modulation and then we go to auto pan and what it's doing is it's moving the signal from the left ear to the right ear in the stereo image and this will create some movement and again it's the amount. It's basically also an LFO doing that as you can see here the rate. LFOs are low frequency oscillators that um, create a signal that is not audible but we can use the lower frequency signals to modulate events like this amount for instance. So. Now we can hear it moving from left to right as well. See, and now if I solo this, you can hear it. So it's getting darker and brighter and it's moving left to right. So that's a lot more interesting. And now we can listen to it longer over time without being annoyed. Okay, so um, we are going towards um, the break and the build down. So here in the break, like we have completely um, creative freedom. And right now I also need to find like a B section to see like how I want to continue. So I would end this video 
uh, here for now and in the next one we're gonna um, have a look and have a listen to other elements from the template to see how we can create um, an interesting break and how we want it to continue so in a sense we're trying for looking for another loop or something that is connected to what we've just built and uh, yeah so this will happen in the next video and I hope you can use this as an inspiration working with a reference track to get an idea for your arrangement and then yeah turn your loop into something that is sounding and looking like a track thanks for watching see you in the next video